as usual, customer for Memphis basketball, high expectations. What are your thoughts on the season? Well, I mean, you know, we, we do have, have uh, expectations, high expectations, but that's going to be normal when you're at a program like Memphis where it's an elite program. And, and uh, when you have 18,000 season ticket holders, I mean, there's going to be expectations. But we welcome that. We don't shy away from it. What we've got to do is do our job on the court. Uh, win as many games as we can and, and try to get to the NC2A tournament and, and make a run. Are you still adjusting to uh, head coaching? You know, I, I think I'm better today than I was when I took over, and uh, but I also recognize i got a long way to go. Uh, I have to get better in a lot of different areas. That just comes with, again, the more experience. Uh, and each year as you go forward, you're going to have more experiences. You know, last year I heard people like Tom Izzo, Coach Williams, a couple of these other guys say, of all my years, this is my toughest year of coaching. I felt like last year, this is my in my second year, this might have been my toughest year I'll ever have to encounter because of so many young guys. I mean, that was a uh, um, that was a hard thing, and so I was like, man, I you know, hopefully I got my year out of the way, you know, because you know you're talking about guys like Coach Izzo and Coach Williams and a couple other guys around the country where they're just saying this is their hardest year of their career. But I felt like we had a hard one in my second year just because of the youth uh, with that we had. How, how have the guys improved during this offseason? Well, um, I mean, they've, they've worked hard. I mean, they've, again, them being, you know, because we're still relatively young. Right. We were the third youngest team in the country last year, but now we're dominated by sophomores. Um, but the difference is they've been involved in playing at a high level in major games. We, one thing we did well is we, we knew how to win close games. We had a really good record on close games, like 13-3 and three and five points or less or something like that. So we were – guys knew how to get stops or hit shots. But, you know, they, they, they also know going into the, through the summer and through the preseason that no longer is it about the opponent. It's got to be about Memphis. It's about what we do defensively, offensively, things like that to, you know, to put us in a situation. Will you have any changes from, uh, I guess, philosophy for you from last season? No, we want to play fast. We want to attack. Uh, I, I'm not. A, I don't want to overcomplicate things. I want to keep things simple. I believe simplicity makes it better. The more they got to think, the slower they're on their feet. So I want to keep things simple. How much of it is a uh, difference when you come into the gym and uh, you, you're teaching the guys that you hadn't been too long ago been in that position yourself? Well, uh, I mean, we're we're um, constantly talking about it. You know, the good thing is we have a good. I have good staff. You know, I've got guys who've played on my staff who've played in the NBA or currently play in the NBA. So that helps with some credibility when you're talking about our guys because you know, our guys, their whole goal and aspiration is they want to play in the NBA one day. So to have guys that actually ran up and down the floor at that level is a, is a big plus. You're touching on it. Uh, one of the guys on your staff currently in the NBA is? Luke Walton. And how, how does he fit in? He, he's a, Luke's done a great job. He really has, and he's enjoyed it. Obviously, we're, we're, we have him as long as the lockout goes. But the rewards have outweighed the risk of having him in there at, at all. So, uh, uh, you know, people have asked about, uh, um, people have asked about, you know, is it worth it if he left tomorrow? There's no question. Just the rewards outweigh the risk. And uh, he's, you know, again, the guy's been in four world championships, won two of them, he's been with the Lakers for a total of eight years, been with Phil Jackson. You're going to be pretty darn good when you're around the guys. What are your thoughts on the conference as a whole? I think the conference is totally underrated and undervalued. Uh, I think the perception of the league has not caught up with the reality of the league. I think uh, there's a lot of good coaches and individual players and teams and I think it's a really good basketball league but I just don't think it gets the credit. Um, I mean, you know, a lot of these coaches have been in other, you know, so-called power schools or BCS conferences and, you know, you talk to these other guys, they say, like, hey, and a lot of these teams, especially the upper echelon, can compete in these other leagues without question for the upper echelon of their leagues. Um, but it just, the perception of the league is what it was six years ago when Memphis was smashing everybody and, um, and, and the teams in the league have all caught up. I mean, there's a lot of good, you look at it, I'm the most inexperienced guy in the league. And, and you look at all these guys and their win totals, I'm so far behind, so I'm like, every night I'm playing a guy who's, who's won 200 games, 300 games, four, have done this, have done that. So, but again, the league doesn't get the credit I don't think it deserves, it just doesn't. You mentioned that, you know, the, the Tim Floyd, the Larry Faces, the Matt Doherty, you know, the, talk about just the way this, this conference has developed in that regard and in the quality of coaches from across the board. Yeah, I mean, the, the, Tim, the, league's, the league's good and, and, and there's a lot of good coaches and who 
and you get a lot of good players. It, maybe some of the players even second chance who are elite recruits, but maybe things didn't work out for whatever reason. So they're coming to Conference USA is kind of like to, you know maybe a second chance, and um, it's just night in night out. You got to bring it. Uh, it's just unfortunate where in our league, if you take an L somewhere, people nationally just all of a sudden think, oh, that's a bad loss, and it's not. But the only way what we can do is to try to win non-conference games as a league as a whole to try to you know change that myth. But I think that's the biggest thing with the league is the margin of error. Because if you take an L within the league, you, you looked upon as a, it's a bad loss, like it really hurts you. And we're, I'm like sitting there, man, that's a, this is a good team. Has the conference reached your point to where multiple teams in the postseason, uh, in the, in the uh, NC2A, uh, let me phrase it that way, uh, are deserving? Well, Jerry, I, I think there's. I think we deserve to have multiple teams uh, in the league in the tournament. I was really concerned. I mean, here's UAB. They ended up winning the league last year, and you're. They might not even got in if some things didn't shake out at the end. And so I'm thinking, here's we have such a good league. You win the league title, regular because regular season title, and there was a chance UAB didn't get in. And I had told our my staff. All we got to do is win the regular season, and you're automatically going to be in the NCAA tournament. Well, then it comes find out of it that might not have been the case. And I'm like thinking, well, I mean, that's not fair to a, such a good league. I just, it, it's just not fair. And again, that goes back to it doesn't get the respect. Now, I will say in the, this year's NCAA uh, tournament selection group, the, 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 the ten people, I think six or seven are from non-BCS. League, so that might have a little difference, you know. But again, I, I, you know, I don't know. I know there's no exact. I just think it's just one of those things because our numbers show that we're, we're a good league. It's just, it's just got to be the perception, I think. Because again, the people in the room are still human beings. You can never forget that. Isn't it a matter though of winning, you know, of multiple wins in, in a tournament, like like UAB, for example. People watch the Clemson game and say, "See, I told you they never yeah. won." You know, take like so. Is that what it's going to take? Yeah, Not I, one team going through, but a couple. It's got to be a couple, and you got to make a run. Um, uh, and and then the other thing is we got to continue to win non-conference games. I think that's a big thing uh, against good opponents. You know, we got to win non-conference games to make a statement. But you're right, we got to get into the tournament. Um, and try to, to win some games because here you look at some of these things where you're looking at like the Big East or some of these where maybe they didn't have the same success as maybe the, you know during the all the but it doesn't matter because the next year they're still going to get the amount of teams and it's just those are just the facts so the best thing that we can do is win non-conference games and then if anyone gets into the tournament there whoever gets in try to you know try to win a couple one of the hot topics in athletics today obviously is realignment seems to be a football driven thing for you as a basketball coach you know whose fate may or may not be affected by where you go what's your feeling what's your view on on it since you know you may not have necessarily a ton of control no i got no control over it um i think it's so far above any basketball coach i think it, you're talking football first of all is running everything so you're talking it's going to be the presidents and the board of regents and huge boosters you know or, or companies i mean it, it's tv people so my thing is, like I, I've said to some, do we, or, you know, like I'll see some other coach, hey, are you guys still even having sports anymore? Or, or, or what? I mean, it's just because you don't know. I mean, I'm just, just what it is. And um, I don't want to say an old saying of just and be redundant and saying it is what it is, but it kind of is because what are you going to do? You're just, you're kind of at football's mercy and everyone else's mercy. And I, like people ask me, especially at Memphis, his name is thrown around in different leagues. He says, what do you know? I'm like, let me tell you something. I know the same exact what the public does. And, and they're not going to tell me because it's, it's, one, is probably not my business. And secondly, it does, basketball is not going to carry the weight. Because if you look at the ratings on things, the, even go, go, unless it's like in maybe in the final four, they don't, college basketball doesn't have high TV ratings. It's more about content. Um, what are ratings is college football. That's what drives. So I understand that. It's a business decision, and that's what you go on. How unsettling is it, though? Because, I mean, obviously, if, if you guys were to move, you, it affects your travel. It affects, you know, your day-to-day -day and, you know, budget and things like that. How unsettling is it for you that, you know, well, you just kind of start? Well, you know, with Houston, um, Houston's being thrown around a lot. Um, so you don't know where they, that could happen. I, I just think there's a lot of influx, and there's a lot of flexibility, and there's just a lot of balls being juggled. Heck, they're talking about us, like you said, the Big East. Uh, I know our athletic director wants to get in the, you know, is buying, trying to get in the league, as every athletic director is. Uh, um, but, heck, I, I, I could see some times where a guy or a team, a school, a university, who's maybe in the central time zone because they want to get in one of those leagues, goes to the Pac-12. Mm -hmm. 
So you just don't know, or, or, or us for the Big East. I mean, that's a long travel from there to New York. I mean, Conference USA is a wide variety of travel now. I mean, that's that's probably as wide a description of travel as you can find, going from UTEP all the way to Marshall. Um, I mean, just in, and in between. So it is what it is. Again, it's just when you're going to do what you got to do. And, and it, as basketball coaches, you're not going to have a lot of say. You just kind of got to go with the flow and whatever whatever the superiors say is going to happen. You just got to follow along.